My name is Michael Wooldridge. I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Oxford and I study artificial intelligence. I'm this year's Royal Institution Christmas lecturer and this year we're going to be looking at AI. So artificial intelligence is about building machines that can do things which currently only human beings can do. Um, and for the most part it's about getting them to do very, very, very specific things like being able to translate from one language to another or to drive a car or to play a game of chess. And what we focus on in AI is here's a particular thing which currently only a human being can do. How can we make a machine do that? So the public perception of AI is very closely tied to robots. When we imagine artificial intelligence, we, we imagine robots and we imagine robots that can do things for us like just come in our house and tidy it up or clean the streets and so on. But the truth is um, progress in robotic AI has been a lot slower than progress in uh, text-based AI, the kind of chat GPT based AI. And the simple truth is AI in the real world, in the physical world, is just very, very hard. But nevertheless, we've seen progress and we're here at the Oxford Robotics Institute. We're going to go and see some colleagues of mine uh, who are working on the state of the art of AI robotics. I'm Carla Maiolino and I'm Associate Professor and Engineering Science Department of the University of Oxford and the DPI of the Soft Robotic Lab at the Oxford Robotic Institute. Here we just design and control robots for uh, very different applications. So from industry to inspection to medical robots or robots that allow us to, um, that can interact with us in a, a safely manner. Uh, from uh, robot dogs uh, to manipulators, but even soft robots that um, actually have a soft and compliant bodies uh, that are like designed to, uh, let's say, mimic biological organisms and safely interact to very dynamic and uh, uh, different kind of environments. The HSR is actually a robot that uh, we are using and uh, is supposed to be used for uh, domestic use. So the robots can, uh, uh, can, can be programmed uh, to be able to recognize objects in our uh, environments and also maybe to interact with us. So we can even ask uh, to grab for us uh, a bottle of water and like uh, end over to us. Part of what we do is try to uh, make robots learn from their action and so like progressively acquire uh, more skills as uh, really as human uh, do. So sense of touch can be also used uh, for learning because for example we can teach the robot to perform a task by touching and moving the robot as we would do with maybe a person to show uh, a certain task. So we can exploit that kind of uh, perception to teach the robots and so the robots can learn through, through this. Uh, the idea is uh, actually to develop algorithms to allow them to use their sensor information and to learn from also their action uh, to be able to accomplish all the tasks that are required. So thanks for showing us around this afternoon and showing us some amazing demos. You're very welcome. Where are we seeing AI in all of this? Is it embedded in everything you do? Computer vision, machine learning, neural networks? Nowadays, with, all, with most of the robots that uh, we're working on here in ORI, uh, AI is embedded. Uh, a lot of it comes uh, into perception. So for example, with the HSR, a lot of it is how the, the robot perceives the world, how it processes text that uh, it's hearing, how it responds to voice commands and uh, of course how it uh, recognizes things around its environment or how it plans its path around humans or obstacles in a domestic environment. Okay, so I've worked a little bit with some of your colleagues here in the lab 
And it's always seemed to me that robotic AI is just much harder than uh, mm -hmm. you know, the AI of text and symbols. Absolutely, yeah. So why is that? Why is robotic AI so hard? It's because of the embodiment. You have to deal with so much uh, sources of potential noise. You have to deal with uh, sensors. You have to do interaction with the environment. You have uh, things that are really hard to, co to model, for example, contact. And of course, yeah, uh, the, the mechanics, if you wish, of having a body adds a lot more complexity to the system. And do things go wrong an awful lot more often? Do they break down? Things break. <laughs> <laughs> things tend to break. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, maybe initially with hardware, for example, uh, a lot of the hardware that we're using now is, is, is mature. But for example, two or five years ago, it was a lot harder. We would see a lot more sort of robot downtime. Nowadays, we you know, have progressed a lot. So mo most of our robots are really robust and uh, you know, a lot of the approaches that we have are very, very sort of uh, uh, repeatable. Okay. Well, thank you to you and to the team for showing us around and showing us some amazing work. Thanks and we so look much. forward to showcasing some of it in the Christmas lectures. Cool. You're welcome. Thank you. We've had some amazing demos from some brilliant colleagues who are working on robotic AI. Uh, and what we've seen is that things which seem completely trivial to us, that we don't even think about them, just picking up an apple and putting it in a bag, are phenomenally difficult when it comes to robotic AI. So there's a huge amount of work to be done on robotic AI before we have, for example, robots that can just go in our house and tidy up for us. Um, and a huge range of challenges, scientific challenges, deep challenges that need to be addressed. But we're seeing progress, the area is moving forward and some of the demos today point the way for what that progress is going to look like. So I'm optimistic about the future of robotic AI, but I think we have to remember, robotic AI is just much harder than the kind of textual AI of ChatGPT and the like.